Ashley, can I have roll call, please? Cavalier? Here. Kressel? Here. Klatt? Here. Vedbratton? Here. Melby? Here. Jerdy? Here. Erickson? Here. Briggs? Here. Okay, this time for the open forum. If anyone would like to address the council on any issue not already on tonight's agenda, may come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. Hearing none. Chad, is there anyone waiting on the phone bridge? Would you please sign off on the city's phone bridge? Thank you. Agent Law. Hearing none from the people in the council chambers. We have uh, one presentation tonight. Megan Peterson, owner of consulting firm Vocal Fuel, who created the survey for us. Megan will provide, will be providing the summary of the responses to us tonight. Okay, I'm going to have this going the same as you all, but it's just easiest, I think, if we have Chad deal with that from behind. So, a few weeks ago, we sent out a survey. We were lucky enough to have um, 700, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Chad, um, 701 online reports. Um, tonight, I'm just delivering a summary of those reports. This is in no way uh, my personal statements, an interpretation of the statements. It is just a report of the statements made, okay? Um, next slide, Chad. So we had 701 online reports. That was through the online link. We had 16 hard copy surveys completed for a total of 717 total respondents. Go ahead, Chad. So um, question one and two, you'll see them on the same slide. Yep, go ahead. And I'll make sure I say all of the words that are up there, just so you know, too. Um, question one and, one and two are both listed on the, the screen because they pertain to each other, and I was able to make them fit. Question one pertains to uh, whether if uh, people used a phone to call the city in the last two years. We were trying to gauge customer service, who uh, uses the city for different services. You can see that 416 people have called, have report, of the, the 701 reported that they called. The, sir, um, the city, 20, um, 277 reported that they had not, and 23 couldn't quite recall. Uh, the customer service on the call was rated at a 7.57 average, and that was out of the 701 people who responded. Next slide. Question three and five, you'll notice four will come on the next slide, are both pertaining to the city of Crookston's website. The first question for number three was whether they had used the website in the last two years. Just wanted to see if they used it. 521 reported that they had used the website. It gets pretty good traffic. 184 reported that they had not, and 11 are unsure if they had or not. In terms of user friendliness, that was question five. There was an average response rate of uh, 5.23 in terms of user friendliness. Now that includes a variety of things, but how easy people can navigate it, how user friendly it is, uh, where if things are intuitive of that nature. Go ahead, question, uh, next slide. So question four breaks that down a little bit more. Um, and I, just, I see that it's a little bit hard to see, so I'll make sure I, I mention everything up there. But we wanted to understand what features 
and services were people frequenting the website for? What did they go there for? Um, you can see the, the vast majority of people, the purple there, uh, was accessing activity information. They were looking for activities in town. It was, um, some people would consider that the fun finder, that kind of information. 22% were looking for city council information, which uh, throughout the survey included contact information, meeting minutes, uh, access to the YouTube videos and such. 15% reported uh, they wanted to sign up for summer programs, which again includes the fun finder, but is a little bit more specific. 8% were trying to look up a city code. 8% were looking to access permit information. 7% were looking for community rental information. 8% were signing up for swimming lessons. 2% were looking for general contact information for um, probably departments at the city or individuals at the city. Um, people did mention actually looking for fire department information and police department information later in the survey, so um, I gathered that that could be part of it. And 2% mentioned trash, recycling, and cleanup information. <coughs> Next slide. So on to question six. These are some recommend recommendations based off of, again, this is not my personal or professional recommendations. These are recommendations that were asked in question six for people to provide commentary of items, uh, specific services, things that they noticed on the website to, to make mention of it. And so I themed kind of everything together in terms of what the most popular ones were. First and foremost were the, the user friendliness and the broken links. If you have been somebody who went to the website, that you may have been somebody who made that comment. Um, another er, pretty common one actually was, um, I called it resident services selection based off of what somebody else called it on the, the survey, but a lot of people mentioned needing trash, recycling, and cleanup information, uh, which could all be used there as well. And a few people mentioned it would be nice in a section as such to have a new resident section. So that could be something that, as Chad is working on the, the website, could add as well. Uh, council information came up repeatedly in a variety of forms. So I think member contact information, including if those individual council members have uh, council Facebook pages, a link to those pages, minutes, and then the direct links to the YouTube recordings. And Last but not least, the easier access to the fun finder, activities, programming, community events, pool info, and such, uh, making that more intuitive. Okay, next slide. So question seven is in regard to the services offered. And the, ser the questions were posed in a way that hopefully people might have become more aware of what was offered through each of these different entities. But um, 42 people said that they strongly agree that they were aware of the services that the City of Crookston City Hall offers. Uh, 154 said that they agree. 223 said that they somewhat agree. 82 said they neither disagree or agree. 94 said they somewhat disagree. 89 said they disagree. And 25 said that they strongly disagree. So as you can see, just from, I mean, if you can't read the numbers, but you can look at the data a little bit, uh, overall, even despite having a 5.54 user rating, people still felt that they knew quite a bit about what the services were offered uh, at the City Hall. And there's always room for improvement. Question eight, next slide. This question was pertaining to the City of Crookston City Hall embodying a high level of professionalism. And 46 respondents strongly agreed that the uh, City Hall embodies a high level of professionalism. 149 agreed, 154 somewhat agreed, 134 neither agreed or disagreed, 112 somewhat disagreed, 85 disagreed, and 40 strongly disagreed. Next question. So question nine was pertaining to if respondents felt that the City Hall reasonably addressed their needs and concerns as Crookston residents. 45 respondents strongly agreed that their needs and concerns were met. 135 agreed, 100 somewhat agreed, 187 neither agreed or disagreed, 
64 somewhat disagreed, 138 disagreed, and 47 strongly disagreed. And you'll notice from this graph, um, it's a slight more into that 50-50 ratio. Okay, go ahead. So question 10, again, goes back to recommendations, and this is, uh, was kind of the last question per each section of the survey. There was three sections. The first um, covered City Hall, the second covered City Council, and the third covered Cheetah. Um, you know, we could have asked 100 questions, but we knew people wouldn't take a survey that long. So uh, the last question in each, sec each section asked for more long answer comments. And those comments, again, just like the last time, were lumped together to create kind of themes of recommendations. These, are, again, are in no way my interpret interpretation. They're just a summary of the report. So um, 22 people rec um, were actually satisfied with the current offerings. Is connecting. 14 requested a better trash system, including um, taking a really hard look at the trash bags. 15 wanted better care of current grounds, including beautification and care of like uh, sidewalk structures. 37 people mentioned wanting more arts, crafts, or music offerings of all ages. 12 people requested uh, someone address the child care shortage in this community and more maternal support. 31 people requested more growth or more businesses. 40 people requested better communication and better planning. And there were specifics given, but that was kind of the general theme. 36 people requested better use of the Crookston Sports Center. 41 people requested better use of nature and river areas, parks, and trails. And several of the comments about communication included those things as well, as well as the Crookston Sports Center. 13 people mentioned more diversity, equity, and inclusion. 64 people mentioned more programs for children's, children and teens, and as well as families. And 58 people recommended community ed or adult education programs, many specific to sewing, gardening, that, those were a lot of the themes. Next slide. So question 11 goes to the question if the city of Crookston City Hall serves the best interest of the residents of Crookston. And 58 people strongly agreed that they did. 136 agreed. 99 somewhat agreed. 199 neither agreed nor disagreed. 61 somewhat disagreed. 120 disagreed, and 41 strongly agreed. And while I did mention the 716 respondents, 717 respondents, whatever it was, you'll notice that some of these totals vary as people were able to skip certain questions. So if the math isn't adding up in your head, that's why. Next question. Question 12, I feel comfortable attending a city hall meeting. Now, the question on the survey, um, the last part was at City Hall, but tonight we are at the Crookston High School, so um, it would be interesting to see if there were changes in people's responses based off of location. Um, in terms of the comfort attending a, a council meeting, 47 people strongly agreed that they felt comfortable. 158 agreed, 49 somewhat agreed, 190 neither agreed or disagreed, 50 somewhat disagreed, 138 disagreed, and 55 strongly disagreed. Next slide. Question 13. I am confident in our city council members' ability to make decisions for the best interest of Crookston residents. 11 strongly agreed, 47 agreed, 94 somewhat agreed, 103 neither disagreed or agreed, 165 somewhat agreed, 164 disagreed, and 105 strongly disagreed. Next slide. Question 14. I am aware that the city council meetings are recorded and available on YouTube. 
The awareness can vary from person to person. So the uh, 267 were aware that city council uh, meetings are recorded or on YouTube. 163 were aware city councils are recorded, but they're aware, unaware that they're on YouTube. And 258 were aware council meetings are recorded and that they're on YouTube. So a slight variation of words, whether they knew one, the other, or both. Next. Question 15, I believe our city council members do their best to represent the residents from their ward, their constituents. Uh, 17, strongly agreed. 72, agreed. 151, somewhat agreed. 133, neither disagreed or agreed. 141, somewhat agreed. 105, disagreed. And 71, strongly disagreed. Question 16, do you understand all of the services that Cheetah provides to the Crookston area? 221 respondents said yes, 262 respondents said no, and 99 respondents were unsure. Question 17, on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with Cheetah? The average response was a 3.46. Question 18, again, is one of the summary types of questions where people were able to provide long answers. Um, some of these answers included um, multiple recommendations, or multiple concerns. So those were broken apart into um, each of their own statements. So it is possible that somebody made a comment that pertained to one theme and another within one statement, um, while other people left no comment at all, just so you know. Um, 46 cited concerns over specific business transactions. Some were vague, many gave specific details. 64 um, people cited concerns with the character of um, EDA leadership. 17 people um, desired more business in town. 17 desired cooperation amongst leadership. 51 mentions a lack of communication, a lack of education, um, and a lack of marketing for programs. 11 mentioned HUD or low income housing concerns, and 81 people mentioned desiring more transparency. So this is my last real slide about the questions. Um, this also is, is question 18 kind of continued. Uh, 247 respondents specifically mentioned, this is not my deduction of, there was a specific comment, that they were in support of changing Cheetah. Some mentioned that meant changing leadership, some meant that changing the leadership in the board, some meant that um, going to the communi community development director position, some didn't mention anything but did mention uh, being pro change of, of Cheetah. 54 people, same thing, mentioned very specifically their support of Cheetah. Um, Cheetah remaining as is and or specific leadership or the board remaining in place. So last question, question 19 was a little bit of a redundancy but it was more open to the whole survey, um, not just Cheetah specific, it followed up after that, it was another open-ended question. Quite frankly, most of the comments were redundant. I would have been reporting the exact same thing or the vast majority of people said no comment. So I um, removed question 19 out. It will be available later, but there's, there's not a whole lot of um, like reportable substance in that comment. Um, question 20, demographics. You can see uh, who identified. We did not ask for specific um, demographics age, race, sex, religion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we wanted to make sure that people were either residents right here in Crookston, lived right on the outskirts of Crookston and utilized Crookston services or in some way connected to Crookston and utilized services. So 86% um, of people who took this survey identified themselves as an like, in-town Crookston resident. 7% said they lived on the outskirts and used Crookston services and 7% said other. 
the people who said other were asked to identify what that meant to them, and many seemed a little bit confused by what, where they fell into and, and went on to describe that they were, they lived in the country outside of Crookston, you know, and, and used Crookston services, their kids went to Crookston schools, things like that. That is all I have to report. Okay, moving on. Do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, Delane. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second, second by Don. Thank you. Discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Vedbrotten? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Okay, this brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? I make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, Clayton. Is there a second? I second, Your Honor. Second by Delane. Thank you. Roll call, please. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Vedbrotten? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Okay, this brings us to the public hearing. Ashley. Thank you, Your Honor. Item 7.01 is a public hearing on the question of rescission of the enabling resolution concerning the Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority and to dissolve the Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority. Individuals may address the council with a maximum of three minutes is allotted for each individ individual, Your Honor. Okay, I'll open this public hearing. Amy, would you be willing to give a brief presentation, please? Yes, I will, thank you. Uh, first, um, thank you to all of you for coming out and playing an active role in your city government, um, participating by completing a survey, if you did. Thank you for that. We want you to be engaged. We want you to be here. We certainly want to um, see better grades for um, the city as far as comfort for attending city hall meetings and those types of things. Know that we will be working on those. The results of the survey, we will um, be working to get better grades from you the next time we send that out. I want to begin um, by addressing a few things. Uh, one. I am new to this problem. I have been in Crookston since October of 2020. This is not a new problem for Crookston. This is not a new conversation that Crookston is having. It is a different way that we're having it. You've had previous administrators reach a point of an ultimatum. You've had your highest elected official, the mayor, um, step down in light of some of these issues. I have had concerns expressed to me directly about some of the letters that were included and attached to the Cheetah Board resolution that people were upset that they were not asked permission to use a letter that may have been written for them and signed at an earlier time. So I just want to know that we were receiving some of those comments. I'm sorry if that happened to you, and I thank you to those of you that reached out. I also want to address some comments that I read about last Tuesday's special Cheetah Board meeting. One, I don't believe our state legislature would ever create conflict or challenge between a city and a city-enabled public body. I do believe that they create the opportunity for separation and independence if the city council so wishes to take the city in that direction. I also want to address my marching orders. And I carefully read the job posting and the desired attributes that the city of Crookston city council published when seeking a new city administrator. Nowhere did I see a requirement for him or her alone to get over there and fix the years-long systematic issues that have plagued this community. 
I can't fix that for us by myself. I hope that I can be part of fixing that with all of you that are sitting up here with me today in the gallery and watching live. Through my municipal experience in education, I do understand the role of the city administrator. Part of that includes being thick-skinned and being able to help the organization address its challenges. Those comments are taken specifically from that job posting that I mentioned before that I so carefully read, before applying for this position. Some people have made some comments that they're unhappy about how Amy did this, how Amy brought this forward, and I, I understand that. I know some of the council members feel that way and also some of the members of the public. There has been a culture in our community of deals done behind closed doors, with a few there that impact many. I never have, nor will I, participate in that type of government. We are not and will not be using the Ways and Means meetings like they have been done historically. If this particular topic was put on a Ways and Means agenda, I do not believe we would be sitting here today having this discussion. I will commit to focusing on transparency, communication, and community involvement. We are going to do better, we are trying, and we're gonna keep trying harder. If we are not hiding anything, there should be no problem discussing a topic on an agenda of a public body. Topics discussed as a public body are not personal. They are not personal vendettas. They are not ways to challenge people, squash things. This is where we have public discussions, out in the open. The way this particular topic was introduced was intentional and well thought out by me. I would not change the way I did it. I'm sorry that it upset some people. That was, was never or would never be my intention, but there are certain ways that you have to do things to get the conversation on the table. This is a tough one. It's emotional for our community, but it needs to happen. We have deep wounds here. We have to start trying to make them better if we really truly want to move forward, grow and progress. The mayor and council members are notified, since I have been here, of the agenda in the same way, at approximately the same time, on the Fridays before a Monday city council meeting. First with an email from me sharing my additional thoughts or background information that I think may be helpful to the city council members. Secondly, on the email when the agenda is distributed, followed immediately by the posting on our city webpage and our Facebook page we post our entire packet. That packet is for council to make decisions and for you also. It is for all of us. I received very few questions after the May 24th agenda went out. My phone, my email were eerily silent. I hope next time that changes. I'm here for the council members and the mayor and I am here for the public as well and I do my very best and I have been doing my very best to address each question. I apologize if I've missed some of you. Um, there's a lot going on right now. I will continue to go through my voicemails and emails and be reaching out. Chad, okay, Chad's got my first slide up. The way we're doing things with economic development right now is really messy, and from my perspective, it's not working very well. I use some examples in my head, one of them being epitome energy, how we communicate in some ways. And I tried to show you how many people we are cross-communicating. There's no one particular point of contact. Oftentimes, um, I'm contacted through the economic development director, then I go down to my staff and ask for information that comes back to me, that rolls back over. A developer may have a question, maybe that goes straight to me. Maybe that question goes back to EDA. Sometimes the question goes directly to one of my staff members. Maybe it's to a state agency. There's so much communication going on. I, for one, simply cannot always keep up with what's happening. And that's a very inefficient way to do business. It's unfair to the developer, the contractor. It's unfair to someone wanting to do business with us. We want to have a one-stop shop. 
Chad, would you mind flipping to the next page, please? My proposal, first off, does not include eliminating economic development. That would be crazy. If a community wants to grow, you have to have an economic development professional guiding that. Um, that is the proposal with um, defining our community development department and creating a community development director. That is who would be responsible, and the ordinance does a good job of defining what those responsibilities are. We will not see that again until a future meeting. That's not on tonight. Ideally, a developer or contractor could either contact us or we contact them. They should have one person to visit with that can then engage the rest of the city leadership team. We hire directors because they're subject matter experts. We hire them because they understand the questions. I'm not a utilities expert, but we have staff that is. Most development discussions involve utilities. They involve infrastructure, roads, sewer lines, water lines. Almost every single one involves finances. That's why we talk so much about money. The city attorney, the city engineer, your building official, who determines if your plans meet city code. Are your roads wide enough for your fire truck to get in there, make a turn, and put your fire out if your building's on fire? Those are, we are responsible for making those decisions. Having those people in one spot that can engage with each other and sit around the table and develop a proposal, pull the city administrator in, and the city administrator then determines like, I need you to do some more work on that. I don't have these questions answered. Or, great job, everybody. Let's get this on the next council agenda. It eliminates so much of that cross-communication. Currently, we have two sets of information. It might be at the Cheetah office, and part of it might be at the city hall. That's very difficult. Oftentimes, I don't feel confident that I have all the information. That's difficult and almost impossible to be a good city administrator for this council and mayor and for this community if you do not have all of your information. Uh, Chad, would you please go to the next slide? Thank you. This is kind of small. I apologize. I'm going to recap a little bit for you. We tried to take a look at um, 2012 through um, current year to date. <coughs> From the city's budget, from various funds, depending on what, um, if it was the annual stipend or if it was for a special project, the city has allocated $2.6 million that has been directly paid to Cheetah. The bold amounts are the annual stipend amounts, um, which range from, looks like 100,000 in 2012 and up to the budgeted amount this year is 155000 I tried to identify, in certain years, you can see that um, there are higher amounts, some in the 200s, 300s, 500,000s. I tried to identify if there were specific reasons for that. Um, for one, if you look under 2017, in September, the city allocated $300,000 to Cheetah. I believe it was used um, for a loan to DE Inc out of our restricted cash account for the BNSF settlement. Um, in November of 2018, $50,000 was sent over to fund the B3 business incentive program and another 350,000 was transferred to Cheetah unrestricted. No conditions. Later there were meetings, I understand, between the city council and the Cheetah board to allocate various pockets of funds, but when it was sent over, it was sent over as a lump sum. The problem with that is, who's getting the questions about that? You are. You are being asked. I have been asked since I've been here. This is one of the most common topics that I have heard other than the vacation payout regarding Cheetah funds since I've been here. I don't know how to help this city council be responsible for that unrestricted dollar amount that was sent over unless we plan to do things differently in the future. I think that's the best we can do right now. We cannot turn back time. We cannot undo that decision. But I think probably most of us sitting up here wish we had done that a little bit differently. And please speak up if I am misrepresenting you. I'm not trying to do that. 
Um, let me get here on my notes. Amy, Your Honor. Yes. At that time, uh, that was towards the end of when I was mayor, and there were two projects that were duly noted that wanted to be done, and that was the total amount of the two. They were not brought out because they didn't want to tip your hand about buying two properties that had to do with projects that the city wanted. To this date, though, those two project properties have not been purchased, and I asked Craig, and the money was still at Cheetah with the interest, just to let you know. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, just give me a second here to get... Um, one of the other things I've heard is at least the perception of lack of oversight of the taxpayer dollars being sent over. And that's a tough, that's tough for the city council who once that money is allocated, it is in fact out of your hands. It is out of your budget. It is not under your oversight. That's a difficult position to be in. I understand that. Um, the, in my opinion, and I've, I have brought this up publicly, the Cheetah Board meetings at 7 a.m. with no agenda published are not set to encourage public participation. Public participation and keeping your finger on the pulse of your community is how you grade yourself. It's how you understand the priorities. It's how you understand where you should focus your efforts. Um, surveys such as the one we just did, there were some tough things on there for us, for all of us. We have to do better, but you have to know where your public wants you to do better. It's important to ask those questions. This proposal provides that. The taxpayers having a direct impact on their elected officials who have a direct impact on the decisions made. I'm specifically talking right now about economic development. The proposal that we have put forth puts those economic development decisions, whether that is money, whether that is determining the direction of growth, how quickly, what projects are appropriate, under the city council's purview. The other checks and balance that you have here is you are in a weak mayor council form. Your mayor is an elected official who doesn't vote unless they're breaking a tie, has veto powers, and is also someone that is available to you, the public, and you, the council members, and myself and others as staff, to reach out to and help form that direction. We have to have, we have to have a consensus on what way we're going. There has been an absurd amount of time spent since I've been here on things that don't involve making ourselves do better. I'm swinging my bat as fast as I can. I feel like I'm at a Royals MLB batting practice and I'm not keeping up. We have to do better. There's things we should be doing. There's things we could be doing but we have to start cleaning up some areas of inefficiencies for us to move towards that. I wanna go through, well, before I do that, we made a very conservative, this is a question I've been asked, what's the cost savings? My proposal has never hinged entirely on eliminating a whole position and saving the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can't do that. However, there are, we made a very conservative estimate of savings at $42,000. I believe there will be more. However, there are some things that I'm not sure how that will look as the city absorbs some of those costs into the operational budget. We didn't include those today. I wanna go through um, a few of the questions. I did issue a question and answer, and thank you to the press who put that out and helped spread that. For one, it has never been our intention to eliminate economic development in our community, nor has it been the intention of eliminating housing and redevelopment, an HRA. Every city by statute has an HRA. As a matter of fact, when ours was independent, we still have it. It's inactive right now. You can breathe life back into it, but it's still there. You have it. We need it. Um, I was very saddened to learn that there were false narratives being spread throughout the community that people that receive our housing services would be homeless. I had residents tell me that they were packing their bags. That's disappointing and saddening to me. Um, I'm not sure where that started. 
I've heard a couple of things. I've heard some people report to me where they heard it. I certainly hope everyone in this room and everyone watching will help stop spreading that narrative and start correcting it right now. Whatever we have to do, whatever plans have to be in place to ensure that our housing services are not interrupted for our residents, the quality of services they're receiving are not lessened in any way, that is what we will do. That is, I believe, the commitment from myself and everyone sitting up here to our community. Um, there have been direct questions asked of me about staffing. Will the Cheetah Executive Director automatically assume the role of Community Development Director? No, not automatically. I've looked at job descriptions. I've been watching on what I believe as the City Administrator would be the qualifications that we would seek and desire, and we encourage anyone that is qualified and meets the qualifications of the job description to apply. Um, I've addressed that no services to housing would be lost. Um, there was a concern from some of our residents that if they paid June rent, they were led to believe that they're, as of June, they may be evicted, also untrue. Um, there's been a question of, will the current, are the current housing staff guaranteed their positions? I understand I was quoted a couple of times of guaranteeing that. I can't do that. I can tell you that it is not our intention to blast everyone out and hire new people and not be able to provide services. That's not the intention. However, the HRA has a board of which I am not a member. So I can make recommendations, which I plan to do, but that decision is not for today. That decision is not for this council seated as the city council. That's for a different day. That's not these people seated as council to be making. It is not our recommendation to make a change to that right now, but that again is not the decision that will be made by this body. And one question was asked, who? Who did I work with to develop this proposal? Well, I certainly worked with legal counsel because I am not an attorney. I have a master's in public administration. I do not have my law degree. We've consulted other EDA experts. Um, we continue to have discussions with different HUD representatives. Um, I have found that getting through the HUD telephone system is much like calling the IRS and trying to reach a person. So it takes time and it takes perseverance. So we are doing that now. Um, another common question has been asked, what is Cheetah? What does Cheetah do? And so I pulled today just, I'm gonna read to you their mission statement and then the services listed on their website and you're welcome to check them yourself, but I thought it was important to address that today. Um, mission statement is the Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority, Cheetah is Crookston's leader and catalyst for economic development and all public housing creating a progressive community through collaboration with all stakeholders. The Crookston Housing and Economic Development Authority offers assistance with the following services. Community and housing information and incentives, building and site selection, financing alternatives, training opportunities, business startup, retention, expansion and relocation, public housing, customized living spaces available, housing choice and project-based voucher program, and management of Valley Technology Park, the business incubator. For those of you that may not know, Valley Technology Park is actually owned by the city and managed by Cheetah right now. So again, the um, incubator spaces, not an intention by the city to disrupt that. We think it's a good program. We would actually love to see more people going through it. Um, I was asked at our last council meeting um, to go through a list of, of pros and cons, and I have provided this to the city council. I prefer to call them benefits and challenges myself, and that's how I'm going to refer to them as I read them out to you. Um, the benefits, we believe, are having an HRA board that focuses entirely on housing and residents. EDA, the EDA job, the economic development job, it's a big one, and so is housing. And it is my strong desire and will be an equally strong recommendation that I will continue to say, I believe the housing staff should be located at the Oak Court um, complex where they have, where the residents have direct access to the housing staff. That's something they've expressed to us repeatedly. Um, we understand it worked quite well when it was done like that in the past. 
I talked a little bit about cost savings, council oversight of economic development activities, communication and collaboration in one building. I talked about that before, a one-stop shop. Utilizing our city staff expertise, our leadership team, those department heads that we think are so important that our charter calls for city council approval. It's the city administrator's recommendation, but it's city council's approval of who fills that spot. And then council oversight and input on funds allocated for economic development activities, challenges, change in processes. We gotta figure that out. There's anxiety surrounding employment. There is time needed to establish those processes. Transition of duties and information, additional duties for city staff, there certainly will be. And then the hiring process and attracting and hopefully retaining the most qualified candidate. Those are what I believe the challenges are. I do not believe because a conversation is tough or because the process itself might be challenging, I don't believe that's a good reason to not have the conversation. It's not a good reason to not analyze something. Um, so I, unless there are specific questions or if anyone feels that I missed something that you wish I would have said, um, let me know, but that is all I have um, for right now. Thank you, thank you, Amy. Okay, does anyone wish to address the council? If so, please come to the podium, state your first and last name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Sharon Lewis and I'm from Ward 4. And I'm going to give the report from our ward. We did our own survey of both the residents and the downtown area. And I'm just going to give some of the answers here. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. These are not my, but they are the answers that we got back on our survey. And they pertain to Cheetah. They don't fully understand Cheetah's functions. They are, uh, want to know who has the responsibility and they want it clearly defined. It seems that there's too much overlap with city accountability which has created a lot of friction and communications problems. They have also said that there should be more transparency behind the doors in meetings with uh, the city council and separate Crookston housing and that they think that would save money for the city. The Cheetah, Cheetah administrator ran a smear campaign over personal relationships it's that will take years and a good city administrator to have the city and Cheetah be viewed in a positive light. Very untrusting, manipulative, need new Cheetah director. Directives for more, more businesses, both large and small. Get rid of Cheetah. There's not enough accountability. Investigate questions of wrongdoing. Do financial audits and publish them to public. They want to know how the money of rentals are being spent and can they pay for repairs. Need the city hall for easy access to them. Then it's also who does Cheetah uh, she answer to and what does Cheetah have to do with HUD? Craig H. only has his best interest in mind and not that of the city. Remove Craig H. from the position and investigate Cheetah. Cheetah should report to the city. Another one is investigate the last six years of Cheetah's lying and shady deals. Cheetah needs to be disbanded. Cheetah is shady and misleading the city. Cheetah is a mess. Cheetah manager is unethical. Miss Lewis. Yes. Thank you for your input, but your allotted time has now expired. Okay. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Cass Kapiloff. I live in Ward 4 and I'll be reporting from the Ward 4 and Ward 4 Downtown Surveys Open Forum. An unethical deal of Kofi Chickadee by the Cheetah Director and the owner of Chickadee's Coffee being publicly shamed and slandered by the Cheetah Director, which goes against all of Cheetah values of respect, integrity, honesty, and professionalism, needs to be reviewed and investigated by the City Council. Valley Tech Park office equipment. The cubicles and office equipment are no longer at Valley Technological Park, which was transformed into open meeting space. Nothing has been reported to the city or the city council to the whereabouts of this city property. There is a process for surplus property to be declared and disposed of, and the Cheetah Director should be well aware of this process after nine plus years on the job. This should be investigated by the city and city council. Cheetah is not a good investment for the city of Crookston and should be dispersed as the director has no interest in development downtown, de developmenting downtown Crookston. No other city in our area has a board like this and the city of Crookston would do well to get rid of Cheetah. Many business owners have expressed that they don't trust the Cheetah executive director and he should be removed from his position. He has favorites, isn't truthful and respectful. No one wants to say it, but this is true. If everyone believes this was an anonymous survey, I think the answers would be more open to the truth. Do not discourage businesses to locate elsewhere. We have a high turnover in city administration, mayor's office, and the chamber of commerce positions due to a toxic relationship with Cheetah. The Cheetah Board are either corrupt, incompetent, or not well informed to the dishonesty of the Cheetah Director. Cheetah is totally corrupt. Board members <coughs> and City Council representatives have conflicts of interest. Cheetah Director is corrupt. I could write a book about this and will not operate in Crookston because of Cheetah and its Director. They are an unmitigated failure. Downtown was a good place to have a business in the past for the last 20 years. Cheetah should be separated with housing being part of the city and economic development and a separate entity. This would speed up the timeline and moving forward so things can happen faster. Cheetah is blocking the city from moving forward so things can happen faster. Cheetah is blocking the city from moving forward and costing the city time and money and a failure to move downtown further. Cheetah administrator gives misinformation, withholding important information, and partial truths are conscientious issues with the administrator. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm, um, I'm Cindy Ansbacher. I live in uh, Ward 4, 323 Houston Avenue. And um, I, I will be reporting on Ward 4 and Ward 4 downtown surveys, open forum comments, questions, concerns, and other feedback from the residents and downtown businesses. So these are from the surveys. The chaos created in city council chambers is almost always attributed to meddling by the Cheetah director and the creation of false narratives and suspicions towards city staff. The surrogates that make these insinuations always come, always some sort of, always have some sort of tie to Cheetah. The city has been under attack, both subtly and overt in nature. The source of these attacks, insinuations, and misinformation always has a trail back to the executive cheetah director. Continuous lying, providing misinformation, blaming, and withholding information from the cheetah director to his cheetah board, cheetah advisory committee, and city council for a 250,000 forgivable loan to Epitome Energy. The cheated director intentionally misled the, his advisory board, city council, and, cheat, and the cheated advisory committee for 1.25 million interest free loan to Epitome Energy and should be released from this position as director. The APG development project, hmm, project the city the cheated director stated that Kirkston has somehow dropped the ball and that the city was not customer friendly. He was the one that dropped the ball, not the city. The project failure needs to be fully investigated as Cheetah was not fully engaged in this APG project and its failure falls to the Cheetah 
director. The city council made a big mistake giving Cheetah 350,000 without a strategic plan for business retention and succession. Purchase of acceptance of a gift of land from Autotail Power that Cheetah has taken ownership of, this land acquisition must be investigated by the city. Cheetah executive director needs to be replaced and needs to work with the city and disclose where their money is spent. Cheetah is a separate entity from the city, but should still cooperate with the city. Avoid, next, avoid constant conflict and project and project complete transparency in all business transactions. Cheetah is an independent board from the city. Lastly, we need to spend more dollars on downtown, not discourage businesses to locate downtown. We need more downtown businesses, not more closures. We need to be more like Thief River Falls and rebuild downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Demetrius Griffin. I moved here from Minneapolis. Um, I've been a resident of Crookston since November. I was accepted by Cheetah. All right. I don't know nothing about the town. All right. I just moved here. I was accepted by Cheetah. I stay 718 Third Avenue on Barrett. Since I moved here to Crookston, I found a church home, I found friends, neighbors, and good surrounding people. I met a worker from Cheetah, Miss Tiffany Jones. And this lady had never met me before, but just through a letter. I expressed to her that my concerns of living in Minneapolis wouldn't be long if I stayed there due to the George Floyd incident and what we all seen on TV. Cheetah has saved my life. That's why I'm standing here in Crookston. Cheetah gave me a chance to live. I came here turned over a new leaf. I'm a productive member of Crookston. I work. I also attend church. And if it hadn't been for this program and others, then we will be left out in the cold. Now, I don't get involved with the public politics and the money and all that, you know, but I can say this. I love this town, Crookston, and if it hadn't been for Cheetah, I wouldn't be alive today. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Margie. I work for Tri-Valley. Um, the reason that I am attending this meeting is to assure that our current and future clients will not lose the services that they need. We also want to assure that the residents of Oak Court don't lose their housing. If change does happen, what are the plans for a smooth transition? This concerns the most needy of the Crookston residents. We don't want them to get lost in the shuffle as as they are the ones that rely on this assistance. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor and the entire council, um, my name is Mike Scow. I'm a resident of Polk County. I'm here on behalf of the Ag Innovation Campus. I currently chair the board of directors for the Ag Innovation Campus. And um, 
also from Crookston is a native uh, Trevor Brecken. He also is a member of our board of directors and uh, uh, we wanted to come here this evening um, to bring some complimentary words. Um, uh, our project has been in the development stage and um, um, we want to compliment the city council for helping us and we want to compliment Cheetah for helping us. You know, there's, there's things that are specific and actual that needs to be addressed by the council and we were able to get through to the council and get things done through City Hall. And there's a lot of planning things that have to go through Cheetah. And um, um, those two agencies are very helpful for economic development. And um, <clears throat> we have a uh, project management team and um, uh, they were actually kind of surprised um, that this issue came up because um, we've been totally happy with uh, how things have been going um, with the council and with Cheetah. And um, everything that we've been able to get or ask for from Cheetah has been accurate and has proven to be spot on. And uh, we just want to make it clear that we're, we're happy, we're moving forward, and we hope that things can uh, improve between the relationships. Um, if they can possibly do that, uh, we'd like to see that too. Um, but we'll continue to plow forward and uh, we'll continue to do what we want to do uh, for Crookston. We're gonna bring several new jobs. It's gonna be an exciting project. Um, we've had some things that we've had to delay and then now we're, we're hitting things full speed again now. And uh, we're, we're really hopeful and we're proud to be part of the Crookston community and the whole upper Northwest will have a benefit from our project and uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening everybody, my name is Robin Brecken. My address is 35837 250th Avenue Southwest in Crookston. I farm south of Crookston. I have a lot of experience in governance. I spent nine years on the board of Riverview, six and a half years on the school board. I think one of the most important words used tonight is culture. It's been bad, it's still bad. And the worst part is, it's a real bitch to change. Pardon my French. So I guess what I'm up here to ask, there's been lots of accusations, lots of innuendo, lots of smoke and mirrors, a lot of subjective information. And from where I sit, I don't know where the fire is to get this mission accomplished so quickly. Uh, if there's problems with Cheetah, I think it deserves a better exercise than Cheetah should be changed. Okay, what part? It's a pretty blanket statement. The grades uh, in the survey for yourselves uh, aren't very flattering. Probably give or take 50% at all, and by any grade, grading standard, that's an F. So, which doesn't get me all excited about transferring this entity, Cheetah, and everything involved with it, to an organization or a committee or a board or whatever you want to call it that has a current grade as an F. So, what I'm asking for is some patience, some due diligence some communication, some transparency, and if in fact this needs to happen, then I think the whole community would appreciate a better understanding of why. Also, government as a whole, and I hope you guys are different, government loves to get bigger, and maybe it's not by intent, but it's not very efficient. So I think it's kind of ironic that people want to stand here and talk about how inefficient Cheetah is, well, what's more inefficient than government? So again, some patience, some transparency. This is a big move. This is about our city's future. So again, I would ask for some patience. There, in my mind, is no hurry to get this done. And if it needs to get done, then let's do it right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Does anyone else wish to ad address council? My name is Bob Herkenoff. I've been a developer in the city of Crookston for the last seven years in the northeast corner of town. With Cheetahs and the city's help, here's what we accomplished. We added an estimated $10 million of new housing. We found a way to donate 17 free lots. We also made a 30-acre nature public park with 6,000 feet of gravel trails and two ponds with fishing opportunities. We currently have 18 lots for sale with all paved streets, utilities to the lots. We also won an award for the Crookston Homestead Act from the Humphrey School of Public Affairs. In the fall of 2020, I met with Craig Hoyseth and told him I was interested in retiring as a land developer and was willing to sell 60 acres of the city for a future housing development. This area has infrastructure with two future streets with storm sewers, sanitary sewers, and water capabilities. I told him I would sell for $375,000, which is basically the cost of farmland. In December of 2020, I met with Craig Hoyseth and Amy Finch, the city administrator. The plan was for me to meet with the Ways and Means Committee in January. I was never put on the agenda for January, February, or March. Subsequently, I attended a meeting with my attorney, Steve Larson, Amy Finch, and city attorney, Corky Reynolds, to discuss the land purchase. I stayed at $375,000, yes or no. I called Craig Hoyseth the next day and asked him why he wasn't at the meeting. He said he wasn't aware that there was a meeting. This was unusual as Craig has always been involved before with projects on housing. After the meeting, my attorney called and said the city expressed some concerns about wetlands on the property. The city asked that I pay half the cost of a wetland delineation. Paying this was never the issue for me. Let me explain. On the 60 acres I was selling, 40 acres was still in the Conservation Reserve Program for three more years. When that is up, you farm it for a year, then you do a wetland delineation. As land farm will clean up most of your wetlands. This 60 acre property was a real missed opportunity as this is where people want to build. The development by the Rini has always struggled. I will not be bringing up this failed land sale to this meeting if there was not an attempt to abolish Cheetah and its staff. I believe this deal fell apart because Cheetah was not involved. Cheetah has helped Kirkston through many challenging times over the last 34 years. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna Kapiloff, and I live at 206 Campbell Road, Kirkston, Minnesota. Um, I currently work for the Housing Intervention Program through Northwest Mental Health Center. So I do a lot of things um, that integrate housing in my job. Um, one issue that really kind of scares me coming up with this is we just came out of a really terrible year of COVID, and housing was a huge thing. We didn't want people on the streets. We didn't want people in the parks, tents, anything like that. We wanted them with clean water, clean clothes. Um, there was a eviction moratorium <coughs> that was put on that is actually still going on, which halted um, vouchers to be sent out to some of our families. I have certain clients of families that are waiting still since of last March for a voucher. And I'm just wondering uh, with this transition if that is going to prolong their wait or if it is going to be an easy transition where you can take power and be able to get those vouchers out. Because right now they are on the top of the list to be able to be sent out, but I can't get them anywhere because we're in this kind of in between who's going to take control of this. I guess I would be speaking more on the housing side. I don't want to see anybody homeless. I don't want to see anybody have to pack their things. Um, and it is really scary right now because we have um, many people looking at months and months of rent that they may have to pay when this moratorium lifts. So this could worsen it as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Larry Altringer, and I've got some businesses in town here. And uh, I was on the uh, Cheetah Board for quite a few years. And I was there when the council asked us to go into the housing to try to get housing in town because that was a priority because you couldn't get people to go to work. And I was on corruption jobs for 30 years and we turned a lot of money over to the city. But what gets me is just, it takes money to make money when you're in businesses. I got 16 businesses yet and we just put together a deal for two and three quarter million dollars and we didn't go to the city hall because there's too many leaks in the city hall. I won't walk into a city hall because of that. And I got over a thousand employees. What I do when we got a conflict in the companies, I'd fire two people if they can't get together and sit down and act like they were uh, 10 year olds, that's what they're acting like now. I mean, it doesn't make any sense in town what's happening here. And the council, and I hear from different people, we're spending all this money for attorney fees and different things because the council before made all these mistakes. But we got a new person here that says they all made mistakes. And I look at some of you that have been on there for a long time. And I'm saying we need Cheetah Board to make it happen. And I remember when I was on helping on the new flyer deal. Look what that's done for the town. It's helped every one of us. But it was quiet. We did it. It took nine months to get that through because we didn't want Grand Forks to know what was going on so they would offer more money to get them here. But we got to start thinking. Cheetah is still good. I don't care what you think and how much money it's going to cost. It's going to cost all of us a lot of money. But if they can't put this thing together between the two of them, fire them both. Boom, boom. Then hire somebody else that can do it. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Brian LaPlante. I own the former Legion building. I guess the largest issue here is you can debate whether or not Cheetah should exist as an entity or if it fits well with the city structure. What seems to be the problem that keeps coming up over and over and over again is the leadership at Cheetah and the lack of really um, enough turnover on the Cheetah board so that fresh perspectives come into play. But really, whether you move forward on Cheetah or, or keep it as it is or dissolve it, I think immediately what has to happen is change in leadership at Cheetah. And that seems to be the problem that comes over and over again. Communication is a disaster between Cheetah and businesses or contractors. It comes up over and over again. Uh, Mr. Hoyseth just does not communicate. He does not communicate with business as well. He does not communicate with contractors. He does not give a, a roadway or a path forward um, so you can see what a plan is that's coming forward from Cheetah in regard to working with businesses. So it, at a minimum, I think that's the immediate change that has to happen. If, if people have looked at Cheetah in the past and said it has worked in the past, that's very likely. But it hasn't been with this current management at Cheetah. So I think, in my opinion, um, that's the first change that has to happen. And then you might look at different structures for Cheetah or greater oversights with Cheetah, especially there, I believe there has to be greater oversights uh, regarding city council's uh, oversight and management of monies that go to Cheetah. There has to be money uh, asked of the city has to be specifically stated what that money is gonna be used for and where it's going. It just can't be given as a blank check. So I believe that's the the largest issue that has to be addressed immediately is, is change of, of management at Cheetah. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Barton, 135 Washington Avenue. It's tempting to wade into a discussion of Cheetah's failures or to fall into the trap of attacking the character of individual actors. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. The question at hand is, should Cheetah exist? So citizens of Crookston, city council members, I contend that just because we can do something does not mean that we should. 
I contend that even though Minnesota state law allows for the creation and existence of entities such as Cheetah, such an entity is incompatible with our Crookston values. Roughly two thirds of the voting population in Crookston tend to vote conservative. We have all along heard of the conservative belief in the invisible hand of the free market. Where does Cheetah fit into this free market? How many times must Cheetah act in opposition to that invisible hand before we all face the reality that the two are at odds? For more liberal segments of the population, we have long heard of the desire for greater investment in parks, opportunities for recreation, biking and walking infrastructure, and general beautification. Where does Cheetah fit into that picture? I would suggest that it doesn't. So who does Cheetah serve? Expectation and responsibility number one of a Cheetah board member is, and I quote from the Cheetah Oath of Office, to make decisions that are in the best interest of Cheetah and serve as an advocate for Cheetah, not to make decisions that are in the best interest of the city of Crookston or the best interest of the taxpayers of Crookston. No, in the best interest of Cheetah. Unsurprisingly, Cheetah held a special meeting last week to explicitly oppose this meeting, not a meeting to affirm whatever the city council may eventually decide or to affirm the will of the taxpayers of Crookston. And where does the Cheetah board get information to guide their decisions? I quote again from the Cheetah Oath of Office, expectation and responsibility number two, to avoid making decisions or judgments based on information received from individuals, that would be constituents, wouldn't it? Or outside groups. Even when a mayor resigns in protest or a city administrator resigns in protest, no information from outside groups, only the information that Cheetah provides to its own board. Cheetah has become a lender in direct competition with our banks. But with significant twists, Cheetah simultaneously ignores input from taxpayers by design while lending taxpayer dollars and varies the terms of this lending as the board sees fit. This is not good and this is not right. I'm shortening my remarks for you. The solution is not to modify Cheetah, not to request a change to mission or operational guidelines, not to request greater influence or representation on the Cheetah board. Mr. Barton. Nor to request more reporting in greater detail the solution is to eliminate Cheetah. Does anyone wish, else wish to address council? I'm a lot shorter. Hi, I'm Olivia Lyber. I am um, the legal counsel for Cheetah. I work at a firm called Rinky Noonan. Um, and we represent Cheetah and uh, various other cities and um, small cities and towns in central Minnesota. Um, I'd like to address the legal component of this argument. Um, a lot of this is political, as we've heard. Um, but I specifically, um, I'll address some of the beginning comments of your presentation, Amy. The legislative and intent for EDAs and HRAs specifically um, was to create a separate political body. Cheetah and the other EDAs are separate from city council. That's not to say that the city council doesn't have control over EDAs or HRAs. They certainly do. Um, but to a certain extent, there is some separation. Um, and whether you like it or not, they do exist separately. But And you're right, city, the city can decide to change the authority, to revoke some of it, to modify it by changing that enabling resolution. Um, but EDAs have a special benefit to cities because they are specifically authorized to do economic development activity that cities are not explicitly authorized to do. That's not to say that they can't, but for example, the statute, just chapter 469, specifically authorizes EDAs to um, develop new loan programs, um, defer payments on existing loans, um, make contracts for economic development, promote new businesses, all those are 
specifically written in statute for an ADA to do. Um, there are obviously city powers given to do similar economic development activities, but not so specifically geared towards you could make a loan program without having to hold a public hearing, for example. So there's some flexibility with an EDA that cities don't have. Um, and that's why a lot of Minnesota cities use EDAs and HRAs, or a, com a combination of the two, for that specific reason. It's just, it's just easier to do economic development. And again, this is a political issue, but to some extent, it's, it's beneficial to have a board that's appointed and not elected because if there are economic development activities that you that the board wants to do and that would be good for the city, um, the city council doesn't have as much. There's the, the board of EDA can can do it more flexibly than the city councilor can, and that has some benefit for economic development of a city because you're appointed and not elected. But again, this is a political issue. Olivia, thank you for your input, but your allotted time has now expired. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Bob Prudham. I live on South Front Street. I got a couple questions for you. A lot of the concern here is over Mr. Hoyseth. Who is his supervisor? Who does he answer to? The CHEETA Executive Director answers to the CHEETA Board of Directors. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess I was assuming he answered to the Mayor and the City Council. Um, well, that's kind of a different light, but in, in that comment, I guess, there probably needs to be some change from what I'm hearing tonight. I don't think it needs to be big change, but some change and look at some things. I think the Cheetah Board should be run like a, a business. They need to be efficient and answer to somebody and show what they're doing, whether it's the general public or the city council. People need to see that. And I also, one comment, I think the city council needs to be run as a business, and they need to show that the city is running like a business and making profit or, or the best interest of the people. There's a little bit of conflict here with both the council and the Cheetah Board, I believe. They need to work together. I do think they need to make changes, but maybe small changes to start with and get it going, like Mr. Brecken said. And if that doesn't work, okay, now let's go to something bigger and make big changes. Apparently, from what I'm hearing, things aren't working real good right now. So let's make small changes and make it work and let the general public know what's going on and let the city council know what's going on if that's the issue to see what's going on. If need change of personnel. I don't know that that's the answer, but it might be. But keep everything working good that is going on good and investigate some of the bad stuff. And small changes, little steps, instead of drastic, big, all at once. But I do favor a change of some kind. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address Consul? My name is Marcia Odom, and I live at 501 Pleasant Avenue. As I've listened here tonight, it seems that our city council and mayor, whom we elected, don't have a clear path for working with or supervising the cheetah director. We just heard that it's actually the cheetah board whom we did not elect has uh, power over what he does. 
The city council, again, whom we elected and the mayor, named Amy Finch as our city administrator. She has the job of managing our lovely and wonderful city. She has proposed a way to give the city council some authority for supervising the work of economic development and housing. Um, I live in Ward 1, and I support at least um, the general idea of the proposal that she's come forward with. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Hearing none, we'll close this public hearing. Ashley. Your Honor, item 7.02 is a public hearing on the questions of the need for a housing and redevelopment authority to function in the city of Crookston. Just a reminder that individuals may address the council with a maximum of three minutes is allotted for each individual. I'll open this public hearing. Amy, would you be willing to give a brief statement, please? Yes. Um, we explained at our last um, city council meeting the need for a public hearing to establish the um, housing and redevelopment authority is directly tied to the recommendation for the dissolution of CHEETA. We wish to put that um, back. So I don't have a lot of additional information to add that would vary from my, my first proposal, but just want to make the statement that this is tied directly to the recommendation to dissolve CHEETA with then the wish to have the HRA established independently. Thank you, Amy. Does anyone wish to address the council? If so, please come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. Hearing none, I'll close this public hearing. Okay. All right, this brings us to the regular agenda. Ashley? Your, Your Honor, item 8.01 is a resolution to appoint Brandon Carlson as the Public Works Director. Do I have a motion to approve this I resolution? Make a motion, Your Honor. That, uh, by Don, thank you. First, is there a second, please? I'll second, Your Honor. Thank you, Christy. Discussion? Your Honor, if I may, um, Pat Kelly recently retired as our longtime public works director. Um, Brandon Carlson has served the city of Crookston for 15 plus years. Did I get that right? I think. Um, he is a respected leader in our organization. He has a good rapport with his staff. He brings solutions to the table, even when it's not his responsibility to do so. Um, he has demonstrated in my time here that he has the best interest of our city as an organization and our city as a community. And I am proud and happy to recommend that we have an internal candidate that I hope you will join me in approving as um, our next Public Works Director, effective July 24th which is the day following uh, Mr. Kelly's official last day. Thank you, Amy. Any further discussion? Hearing none, can I have roll call, please? Cavalier. Aye. Kressel. Aye. Klatt. Aye. Bedbratton. Aye. Melby. Aye. Jerdy. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Briggs. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we are not going to do a staff reports and recommendations tonight. I just want to thank everyone uh, for coming out tonight to this lengthy meeting. So we'll not have staff recommendations. Um, but I would like to give a uh, big thanks to uh, Chad and Ashley. They put a lot of hard work to uh, move the council meeting out here tonight, so kudos to them. Thank you. 
And just a reminder, there will be no Ways and Means meeting tonight. We are adjourned.